Hello everybody, my name is Juliette Bay and I'm a physical therapist assistant from Rehab Associates, also a personal trainer with 25 years of experience. Here today to show you some exercises that you can do in the comfort of your home, especially with, with what's going on right now in our society with the pandemic and so forth and everybody forced to spend a little bit more time at home than usual. I am here today to show you some exercises that you can do in the comfort of your home with very minimal equipment needed. So I'm gonna show you some things that you can do that keep you safe, healthy, and active. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to show you, as mentioned before, some exercises that you can do in the safety of your home. Very minimal equipment needed. As you can see, I have a chair here. You just wanna make sure it's a nice sturdy chair. Um, maybe a kitchen chair would work for you. Also, if you wanna add, I don't have them here with me, but if you wanna add like two cans of soup or some one pound weight, something light that you're able to control and do your exercises effectively and safely. So you can see that we have the chair here and I'm gonna show you some exercises that we can do with this chair. So you're gonna come right over and have a seat in your chair, okay? Prefer one with a backrest. That way your core does not get tired. Very few of us have enough core strength to keep ourselves erect with nice tall posture the whole time with no support in the back. So that's why I like that back support there. So this first exercise is very good for your hips, your legs, your lower body. Okay, so we're sitting here at our chair. Super important that you're not slunched over. Okay, so before every exercise, I want you to check in with yourself and make sure that you're not in nice, tall, erect posture. So what I'm going to do while I'm sitting here in my chair is just raising my legs up. I'm essentially doing an alternating march. Okay, great exercise for the front of the hips. Okay, also through my quadricep muscles here in the front of my thighs. Now, we don't wanna just do these aimlessly with no count or repetition amount in mind, okay? Cause that can cause a lot of soreness the next day if we're doing too much too soon. So I like to start with a good number, let's say maybe 10, okay? That would be 10 each leg. So one, one, two, two. Notice I'm counting aloud. When I count aloud, that forces me to breathe, and breathing is a very important part of your exercise program. If you hold your breath, it can cause a rise in blood pressure or change your vitals, which essentially is not safe for you at all, okay? That was 10. So counting aloud, again, forces me to use proper breathing techniques. If you don't feel comfortable breathing aloud, just make sure that you're not holding your breath. That's very important, okay? So that was a seated march. <clears throat> For those of you that are a little bit more active, you could do a second set if you feel comfortable with that, okay? Anywhere from one to two sets, let's not go more than that right now, okay? So that was a seated march. My next exercise is a gentle kick out with my legs. Again, tall posture, engage my core, take that leg out and bring it back in out and in. I'm tightening up the front of my thigh when I do this exercise. That stabilizes my kneecap, okay, and controls me through the movement. There's five. I'm breathing and counting aloud. Six. Here's seven. Eight. Just two more. Nine. Notice my movements are slow and controlled. Excellent, always do both sides. So here goes the other leg. Going back to that controlled movement, notice I'm not using momentum and flying my leg up in an uncontrolled manner. I'm making sure that I'm breathing efficiently. I'm going up slow and down slow during the activity. That was number seven, three more. Last three, last two. And there's one, very good. You're gonna feel some fatigue in the front of the thigh muscles. Those are called your quadriceps, quads for short. Okay, so those might be a little fatigue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're gonna incorporate an upper body exercise. 
Okay, maybe the legs are a little tired. This would be a good time to grab your cans of soup if you have them. If not, you can just do it against gravity. For people that have pain in their shoulders or possibly a rotator cuff injury, any kind of ailment like that, you may just want to go up against gravity. You don't need the additional weight. If you have no issues with your shoulders and you feel quite strong and able to add some resistance, grab those cans of soup or some very light dumbbells. So let's pretend I have my light cans of soup or dumbbells. My feet are flat on the floor. <clears throat> my shoulders are relaxed. And I'm pressing up and down. Okay, notice my arms are close to my body. Okay, I don't want them way out here in an uncontrolled way. Again, feel free to just raise your arms against gravity. That alone is work and exercise. I'm keeping my shoulders relaxed, making sure I'm not hiking them up. I'm keeping them pressed down. That's important to do. Last five, I'm breathing. Four, my belly is pulled in tight. Three, engaging my core. Two, and breathing through the exercise. One, okay? Then you could set your weights down, okay? Again, I am showing you one set. By all means, if you feel like you need a second set for it to be effective or you've been doing it for a while and that's an easier exercise for you to do, by all means, rest about 20 to 30 seconds and then do a second set, okay? Let's come back to the legs. This is a good one for these lateral hip muscles, okay? Many of us don't necessarily target strengthening exercises in that area, so these can become weak. An issue with having weak lateral hip muscles is it affects the way that you walk, okay? When your walk is affected, then you can become less balanced, more at risk for falls. Um, it can cause pain in other joints, such as your knees or your low back. So it's important to keep good muscle balance of all the muscles in your body. So this is an exercise that's good for one of those particularly weak muscles, okay? So your leg is extended out, and I just bring it out and in, out, almost like a windshield wiper, if you like it in layman's terms. Here's four. Some exercises are gonna be harder than others, so maybe you're only able to get five, six, that's okay. Please listen to your body and do the appropriate amount. Notice I'm keeping my torso and everything nice and straight. I'm not compensating. Keep everything squared facing forward. Last three. Last two, my toe is also staying pointed towards the sky, okay? I definitely felt that one, so you're probably going to feel that exercise, okay? So I do want to show you a couple of repetitions of this done in an incorrect way. So there's a big X through the way I'm about to show you. So my leg is up, and I'm moving towards my leg. That's a no-no. Also, look at my toe. Pointing out or pointing in, no, okay? Everything squared up, toe towards the sky, stay there. One, and again, watch your breathing. My leg is totally straight. That knee is out straight and extended. Four, more is not better, so you don't have to do a big range of, move, range of motion movement here. Here's seven, let's do three more. Last three, last two. Core is tight, posture tall, and one. Good job. One set would probably be enough of those. See how you feel the next day and decide if you need to do more next time, okay? Grab your weights or your cans of soup if appropriate. If not, again, just go against gravity. I'm gonna pretend I grab my cans of soup. I always get my posture first, okay? I'm bringing those weights up, shoulder level. Okay, notice I'm not way back here, and I'm not like this. I'm doing it just like this, okay? I would highly recommend when you're doing these exercises that you watch me on the link that is sent to you, and you can just do it along with me, almost as if we're in a class together, okay? That way, it ensures that you're doing it correctly. 
Here's five. I'm breathing consistently, keeping my shoulders pressed down. Six. Here's seven. Okay, my back is straight. Eight. Notice how far I'm bringing my weights up. No farther than shoulder level. Okay, big no-no here. Okay, only shoulder level. There you go, and you would set those weights down or just place your hands in your lap. General rule with all these exercises is if they induce pain, cause you any pain or discomfort, you are not to do them, okay? That's important to know. Um, general muscle fatigue is okay and even welcomed because that's what gets you to the next level of strength, endurance, overload we call that. But pain in the joint or even direct pain in the muscle is not recommended. So I want you to be able to describe it only as fatigue. Also, before I get too far off of that and forget to mention it, if you're having pain in your shoulder, if you're having pain in your knee or your spine or your pelvis, that is not something you have to live with, okay? So obviously as a physical therapist assistant, I want to let you know you need to seek your therapist. Um, and you can choose your physical therapy team, but you can go wherever you choose. But highly recommend that you look into getting physical therapy for those ailments. And also remember, physical therapists are the musculoskeletal professionals, okay? There's different people of your medical team. You know, doctors you go to for your major ailments and prescription medication and any concerns overall that you have about your health. But if you have an orthopedic musculoskeletal issue going on, physical therapists are the appropriate people to contact about that, okay? So you don't have to live with pain. It's not necessary. The next exercise I'm going to do goes down to my ankles. So you're gonna have your eyes down on my feet here. <clears throat> Sitting with my feet hip width apart. My posture is still nice and tall. And what I'm gonna do is lift my heels up. Then I lift my toes up. That's one, heels and toes. So I'm strengthening the muscles of my lower leg here. Okay, back here when I come up, strengthens my calf muscles or your gastroc muscle for the technical term. And then when I come up, it's getting my shin muscle. Okay, that's your anterior tibialis for medical term or your shin muscle if you wanna call it that. Here's my last four. And this is good for mobility at the ankle too, which we just naturally lose as we get older, okay? Last two, <clears throat> and last one. Okay, good job with that. Again, one to two sets, whatever is appropriate for you. <clears throat> My next exercise is going to be a postural exercise. Okay, getting a little bit through the shoulders as well. So you're gonna bend your elbows right here beside you. Okay, My shoulders are relaxed, and you're gonna come back and squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, okay? This works the muscles of the shoulder blade region, your mid-back muscles, which are very important for posture, okay? So I'll be doing um, another one of these videos and you will see a postural video, so I'm sure this exercise will come up again. This is great for strengthening the muscles in your mid-back to help with better muscle balance and postural awareness. You're gonna give me four more. We're breathing and we're squeezing. Four. We're keeping our shoulder blades pressed down and back, almost as if you're pulling them down into your back pockets. Okay, so it should not look like this. If you're doing that, it's incorrect. Press them down. Three. And two. And one. Good. <clears throat> okay. My next exercise is going to be a gentle stretch for my neck. Maybe with all of this and sitting here, your neck gets a little tense. So posture is nice and tall and shoulders down. And you're going to take your ear to your shoulder. Very common mistake I see here is this. Okay, that's a no-no. I want you to picture that I'm there with you and I have my hands on the top of your shoulders, pressing them down, kind of like a tactile cue or a physical cue to keep your shoulders pressed down, okay? 
then I take my ear to my shoulder, and you may not be able to go very far. And my older patients at Rehab Associates, when I'm doing neck stretches, I do notice that their mobility has reduced, okay? That's very common. So you may be getting half the range of motion I have. That's okay. Still do the stretch to the point of where it feels tight. Never pain. After five slow, deep breaths, this one is different. You're not doing 10 of these. This is a stretch, not an exercise. So I put my neck in that position and I take slow, deep breaths four times. And that will be about 20 second hold, okay? In order to stretch a muscle, you have to hold it for a period of time. So that's why I'm doing it that way. That was about 20 seconds. Come back to the center one more time with each side. I come down, I take slow, deep breaths. Four of those. Last two. And one more. Good, and you're gonna give me the second stretch on the other side. Deep breathing helps relax you. It also helps facilitate the stretch and lengthen that muscle, keeps the muscles, the other muscles, relax so that you're doing it correctly. Good, that was about 20 seconds. Back to the center. I have one more neck stretch for you, okay? So get your posture nice and tall. You're gonna turn your head to the side and take your chin down towards that collarbone, okay? Going right down towards this collarbone. Give you a little chuckle while you're there by yourself. We call this stretch the armpit sniff, okay? So you're turning your head to the side and looking down. Again, it's a stretch for slow, deep breaths or 20 seconds. I would go th through this a little faster for demonstration purposes only, but I'm hoping that we're doing this exercise class together right now. So with that being the case, I want you to do it correctly. Now the other side, turn your head and look down. Four slow, deep breaths. Make sure those shoulders are not rolling forward. Pull them back. Good job. And we're doing two times to each side. So back to this side. Excellent, and your very last time towards the opposite side. Good job, back to the center. Let's go back to an upper body exercise. You can grab the cans of soup or your light weights or just do against gravity. Shoulders are back, you're nice and relaxed. We pull them up and down, up, down, <clears throat> okay? Small muscle group you're working here, right here at the bicep muscle, three, there's four, <clears throat> five. You might notice today I'm not wearing a mask. Certainly when I'm with my patients during the day or personal training my clients, I do wear a mask, but I'm here by myself, okay, with the videographer who is by far six feet from me, if not more, okay? So I just knew that you guys would be able to hear me a little bit better and be able to hear and see my enunciation if I didn't have a mask on. So I'm doing that so that you're getting a better demonstration of the classes. So please know that I certainly in the community am doing my part in wearing masks both at work and um, during recreational activities. So I just wanted to address that. Another exercise you're gonna do, palms are facing up. We're pressing down and up, down, okay? So keeping good mobility in your forearms here. You may be limited there. Some of these exercises you probably have not done, so you might find and discover some limitations. That's okay, keep doing them. One that's particularly difficult is a good one to do. That way you can target that area and rectify the deficit. 
okay? Last four, and up, breathing, and up, posture tall, good, and my last one, and back down, okay? So, going through all of what we just did here in my mind, I think that we've got a lot of the exercises seated. I want to do a couple in standing position, so let's go over those. So I'm gonna stand up here at my chair, okay? And I'm going to come behind, and I'm actually gonna do a lateral view so you can see it a little bit better, okay? You certainly can still stay facing me. I just want you to be able to see my body while I'm doing that. What we're gonna do, if you're able to, please know that if you have a difficult time or prolonged standing or you have major balance deficits or this just feels unsafe overall, I want you to avoid that. That's the key with any activity or exercise. Only you know your body as well as you do. So you need to make decisions as to what's safe and appropriate for you to do. So if this is not safe for you, please stay seated in your chair and do not engage in this. Um, and also for those of you that are a little unbalanced but feel like you can do this, please hold on, okay? So I'm holding on to the chair here and I'm doing a little march while I'm here, okay? Here's three, my posture is tall, my core is engaged, okay? You don't have to bring your knees up excessively high, just enough that you're clearing the floor. Here's four. Three, two, <clears throat> last one, okay? And again, you decide on one set or two. I love the idea of starting with one set of 10. See how you feel the next day. If you have some muscle soreness, that is very normal, okay? Don't be concerned with muscle soreness. The best way to get rid of that is to keep moving, okay? So you certainly could do these exercises again the next day if you're, if you're feeling a little of the effects of soreness and so forth. That's very normal. Whenever you're engaging in an activity that the body hasn't done in the past, soreness is a normal um, side effect to that. But also, for those of you that are a little bit more aggressive, okay, and like to be sore, please know that you do not have to be sore for the exercises to be effective. So that's important to remember too. Next exercise we're going to do is come up on your toes and down. <clears throat> so if you remember the exercise where I was seated doing the ankle movement, this is half of that um, in a more uh, higher intensity way because you're lifting your body weight. Okay, so here's six. Notice I'm holding onto my chair. Seven, eight, last two, nine, and ten. Good. The next exercise, we did a lot of um, exercises when we were sitting in the chair that worked the front of the muscles, the front of the hip, the front of the thigh. This one, and we, and we tend to be stronger in those front muscles and a little bit more weak in what we call the posterior chain muscles, those muscles in the back of your body. So I definitely want to do an exercise that strengthens the hamstrings. Okay, so I'm standing here at my chair. I'm going to move forward a little bit so you can see me. Leg is out behind you. And what you're going to do is curl and down. Curl, notice my leg is behind me slightly. Not much, but it's not the same if I do this. That's not correct. Get it behind you and curl down. You might get a little bit of cramping in that hamstring, okay? If you do, just rest and maybe go to the other leg. Last four, I'm keeping my belly tight. I'm keeping my glutes tight to keep my body nice and stable. Two and one, good. And you might feel that in the leg that's holding your body weight. That's your stabilizing leg, so it's not uncommon for that to get fatigue as well, okay? That's fine. Make sure when you're doing that, you don't drop the hip down. I need you to keep things strong and sound here, okay? Let's do the opposite leg. It's behind me slightly. It curls up and down. Make sure you're safe on this knee that's stabilizing your leg, stabilizing your body, okay? Make sure it can hold your body weight and make sure you're not locking that knee out where you could cause some injury or pain. Here's four, 
five, six, you're gonna give me four more. Notice I'm doing them slow and controlled. And you may only be able to do five and that's okay. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video, it's important to be doing what's appropriate for you, okay? Last exercise that I want to do is a good functional exercise. What does functional mean? It means that it mimics your daily activities. Can you think of an activity that you do every day? Something that requires you to have some strength that you have to do every day. How about reaching up in your cupboards for something, okay? So that's why we did the shoulder press one because it's important that you're able to have overhead strength, okay? Um, this one is a sit to stand. So think of sitting down in your kitchen chair, using the restroom, sitting down in your tub if you're able to do that safely, getting in and out of your car. So it simulates a squatting activity. So these are called sit to stands. Almost all of my patients in therapy, when it's appropriate, I incorporate these in, okay? Because this is a very effective exercise. First and foremost, scoot out towards the edge of your chair. For those of you that have a hard time getting up and down, okay, I certainly, one, want you to use your hands as needed. Two, you could do this from an elevated surface, like if your bed is higher or if you have something higher than the chair that you're using here. Or you could put a kitchen chair right here in front of you or put this chair up against your countertop so you have something to put your hands on. Please make sure that you're doing this in a safe manner, okay? I don't want you to learn that it wasn't safe or appropriate for you by falling, okay? You need to be in check with where your fitness level, wellness level, and where your body strength is before you execute these activities. So I'm scooting out towards the edge of my chair. My toes are facing forward. And I want you to kind of think of nose over toes when you're standing up. So I'm kind of rocking forward, nose over toes, and then I come all the way up. And then down in a controlled way. Okay? So notice with me, I didn't have to use my hands with that. By all means, if you have to, let's say you have more to your chair than what I have here, if you need to push up, that's okay. And reach back for your chair is fine. Again, if you have a chair here, you can pull up. Please make sure most of the work is being done through the legs and not the arms. Coming all the way up and then back down. You could also be holding onto a kitchen or bathroom counter while you're doing it. And this, is, this one would probably be a little bit more challenging for you, so if that be the case, do two sets of five or one set of five. I'm gonna do just one more. Up, all the way straight and tall, tuck your bottom under you down in a controlled way. <clears throat> so that's a good functional exercise. It's important to stay strong and to be able to do activities such as that one right there so that you're able to maintain independence and live in your home if that be the current scenario for you. Okay, the number one reason that people are not able to live independently is a fall or they can no longer do this, what we call a transfer, or they're unable to walk on their own. So my goal with showing you these exercises is to keep you strong, your body sound, so that you're not only healthy and able to live the best life and have the best you that you can have, but also that you can live independently as long as possible. We all want that, correct? So again, hope you enjoy the exercises. Um, please remember if any of them cause you pain, discomfort, or you discover something, an ailment that you might have when you're doing these, that you definitely contact your doctor, contact your physical therapist if that's appropriate. I do want you to know at Rehab Associates, we are always, we've visited this facility many times and have done many workshops. We're always available for you. Um, definitely, again, want you to have the best time during this ride of life and um, be the best essence of you that you can be. So if you have any questions, reach out to us. I hope you enjoy and until next time, we'll see you again. Stay safe.